two years ago, my calendar looked like this. I had three YouTube channels and two businesses. Now, my calendar looks like this. I have three YouTube channels, two businesses, and two kids. Welcome to Silicon Valley Girl. In this video, I'm going to share my journey from this calendar to this calendar. And it's also a transformational journey from trying to chase uh, everyone's successes on Instagram and trying to compete with everyone to actually being honest with myself, being honest about my bigger goals and being internally happy. So if you're interested, continue watching this video. This video is going to be three parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about rules uh, that I follow when planning my day. The second part will be about questions that you should ask yourself in order to be clear about your abilities and your goals. And the third part would be actual tips that I follow when planning my day. If you follow me on Instagram, a couple of days ago, I decided that um, I want to work from an office and I shared that in my stories. The thing is, when you're at home, it's great to be close to your kids and play with them from time to time when you're working, like take breaks. But another problem is that, for example, yesterday I was on a Zoom call and I was in my room, but my window was open and Emily heard me from the backyard and she started crying. And it's just being stressed all the time. And uh, because I'm working two, three hours a day, I'm kind of shifting to three to four hours a day. I decided that I will take this time and work from an office because Lily is fine for like three hours without me. Oh, she's still, I nurse her. I thought we would need to rent an extra office, uh, but we have an office in South San Francisco with Lingotrip and that membership allows us to work from any of their offices in the Bay Area. So I have this nice co-working now. I have plenty of options around our house and I get to work with him. <laughs> him. <laughs> him. <laughs> him. <laughs> Dimitri. Um, Husband. 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 <laughs> we used to work together since 2011, and it felt so weird that he would leave for the office every single morning, come back in the evening, and be like, how the hell is he working without me? <laughs> so, now we're working together. Work will fill the time available for its completion. This is Parkinson's law. And uh, basically it says that if you tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna give myself two hours to go through my emails, that means you're gonna take two hours to go through your emails. However, if you tell yourself I only have five minutes to do this, then your brain will adapt and try to look for solutions. In June, 2021, the average working week for all employees in the US was at 38.8 hours. Yet a study revealed that an office worker is only productive and actually work for only two hours and 53 minutes of the working day. The rest of the time worker reads news websites, one hour, five minutes, checks social media, 44 minutes, discusses non-work related things, 40 minutes, searches for new jobs, 26 minutes, takes smoke breaks, 23 minutes, makes calls to partners of friends, 18 minutes, makes hot drinks, that's me, <laughs> 17 minutes. The thing is, our brain is only capable of focused work for four to six hours a day. It really depends on what kind of work you're trying to do. Uh, so for example, our CTO always tells me like, I can only code for six hours a day. That's the maximum. I would need the rest of my time to do something different. In my case, blogging, for example, it requires so much energy. I can only record maybe four or five videos a day, which is two or three hours of talking maximum. So based on what you're doing, you can only be focused for four to six hours a day. Now, when I got my first kid and then I got my second kid, I realized I can no longer work on a schedule I used to have before. I'm no longer able to wake up at 9 a.m., spend one hour scrolling from Instagram, then make a lot of calls, then do a lot of meetings, and I start prioritizing. So the first question I asked myself is what's important. I can't miss my kid's development. I can't work for nine hours a day and be absent from their childhood, from their lives. So I told myself, okay, I need to come up with certain hours when I can work. And this actually helps a lot as well. I know that I'm super energetic in the morning, but I also know that in the afternoon, my energy declines. So I try to spend at least 30 minutes with my kids in the morning so they can get some of that energy. Then I go and work for three to four hours. And then in the afternoon, I don't work at all. Well, I do some 
some Instagram stories, but that's it. It's not like proper focused work. Now, once we know the basic rules and how our brain works, let's go and dig deeper into our values. So first of all, you need to accept the situation. And I accepted that now I have kids and I can't be on the schedule I used to be on before. And I want to be in my kids' lives, but I also understand I can't live without work. So accepting situation was the first step. The second step was trying to figure out what times during the day I could dedicate to working. And I thought, okay, in the morning, I'm the most productive. I have a lot of energy and also my kids in the morning, they either nap or they can go to a playground. So they're also active. And I decided that hours that I can work are gonna be in the first part of the day. And this again, helps you schedule meetings in advance, helps you understand your rhythms. Cause then you know that if you have a call at 10 AM, you probably should go to bed earlier so you can spend some time in the morning with your kids so you can have your healthy breakfast, etc. The next step is prioritizing your tasks. So what I try to do now is to have one to two big goals per day. And a big goal can be either jump on a call with an investor or uh, create two or three videos or uh, maybe have a big team call. Because if I have too many, then it's just too much to handle in terms of my brain capacity. And once you know that you only have time for one or two big tasks per day, you actually understand that there would be a lot of things where you would have to say no and you need to be okay with it. So I told myself, okay, I have three of my YouTube channels, top priority. I have two businesses, top priority, but the rest like networking or partying or whatever, I will have to say no. And I'm okay with it because I'm very clear with myself about my goals. And I also want to be that person who makes small steps towards their goal every single day, instead of making my life a rat race where I just, you know, run somewhere every single day. And then at the end of the week, I'm exhausted. And then at the end of my life, I feel like I haven't spent too much time with my kids and was just trying to accomplish something I didn't really want to. And another principle, that I actually realized this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, with all the COVID and all of the work from home situation, I thought, well, it's great to work from home because I'm close to my kids. But in reality, when my kids hear that I'm on a Zoom call or they just hear my voice, they go mad. And um, two solutions to it. First, I got a co-working where I could just go and make my calls and have my focus work. And the second solution is if you have a nanny or if you get help, uh, try and get your kids into playgrounds. And again, and when I didn't have a kid, I was like, why is everyone so angry about playgrounds being closed? Like, why don't you play with your kid at home? Now I understand you can't work when your kid is at home. You just can't be in the same environment. Like I have a bigger house and I thought that would be a solution but because they can hear me throughout the house this doesn't really work. You need to get really serious about distractions if you're trying to work two or three hours a day because this time is gonna be just for you. Task number one for today, buy LVMH stocks. My mom asked me for um, LVMH stock in her portfolio, but the problem is there are only certain brokers that let you buy LVMH. Webull doesn't let you, Robinhood doesn't let you, uh, but there is another one that lets you. Gotta love all the co-working spaces here in the Bay Area. Completely empty. Uh, Dima and I and a couple more people in a huge, huge room. And the whole building is empty. And the parking lot is empty. Amazing. Come and work if you want. And the last principle is actually to get comfortable with delegating because you won't be able to live without it. Even if you're a small business, even if you're just starting out, you know how much money you can make per hour. And the rule here is to find someone who takes less than that and delegate tasks that could be delegated. And it applies to both work and home tasks. Like I've delegated, well, this is a journey and I've been doing this for a while, but I was able to delegate cooking. I, I get help with kids. Uh, I've delegated almost all of my YouTube process, but it took me some time and not only financially, also mentally, because I thought who would edit videos better than I do? Who would take care of my kid better than I do? And then you just realize you need to focus on the quality hours that you have with your kid and you need to focus on your superpower talking to your camera and coming up with scripts. Now, those were the principles that I used. Now let's move on to practical rules that would help you create a schedule uh, that would allow you to work for two or three hours a day and still accomplish everything that you want to. I wanna start with my two favorite rules, a two minute rule and a five second rule. Two minute rule says that if you have a task that takes less than two minutes, then you'd rather do it now instead of uh, putting it into your calendar uh, because otherwise 
We are tempted actually to create a calendar with a lot of smaller tasks, like reply to an email and then you tick it and you're like, oh, all the dopamine, I'm doing something. And then I don't know, clean your desk, tick. I think it's fake productivity. Yes, uh, getting this dopamine is important, but I'd rather focus on one or two bigger tasks instead of just spending time to write down all the smaller tasks. So I don't do that. Especially if you have a lot of tasks that only take two minutes, like buy tickets to a conference or create a schedule for the next day. If it takes less than two minutes, then do it now. Five second rule is a rule that tells that if you have a big goal in your mind, if you came up with the idea, within the first five seconds, take a first step towards the goal. Like for example, if I decide that I want to start this company, then within the first five seconds, I'm gonna write down the name of it or uh, maybe contact a guy uh, who I know codes well and ask him if he would be interested in coding a website. So make this first step because it is really easy to accumulate a lot of ideas. Like I have a notebook with a lot of business ideas and I try to share them on this channel. But if I really want to execute on something, I would just rather take the first step right away so I can keep myself accountable later. The second rule that I use is batching tasks. So today I'm trying to record two or three videos just because I don't like creating one video per day because that means putting on my makeup, making my hair, uh, setting up the studio, the lights, everything. And batching tasks saves a lot of time. So I have a day throughout the week when I make my videos. I have a day when I jump on calls with team. I have a day when I just do regular tasks on my laptop, like replying to emails, getting back to people, planning stuff, etc. Batching really, really helps save you time. Because if you jump from one task to another, like if I had to record this video and then go in a call and then answer emails, I would just feel really distracted. The next rule is learning to say no. And if you go back to principles, if you go back to answering a question, what's important for you, then it will be really easy to say no. So these days I no longer use a phrase, I don't have time for this. I just, I use a phrase, it's no longer my priority. Like if I get an offer from a company, that sounds interesting, but I realize that I won't have enough time to enjoy it and to make it the way I would be happy about it, I would just rather say no and focus on things where I can create a bigger impact. And it gets easier to say no when you have kids. And I use my pregnancy as an excuse a lot. I would always be like, I'm sorry, I'm pregnant. I'm about to deliver a baby. Let's talk about this later. But I also understand that the shifting things doesn't help. I would rather say no right away and take this um, question out of my list and no longer think about it because just having something in your mind just takes this energy away. Way, so I don't do it and uh, I'm still learning to say no and I think I'm gonna work with a therapist about saying no sometimes I think I think too much about uh, making sure other people are happy uh, instead of thinking about my own happiness so I'm gonna work on that but saying no is definitely the first step okay I'm off to Whole Foods to return some bottles and then I'm back home so I worked for a couple hours haven't done much mostly enjoyed the atmosphere but the next time I'm here I'm gonna work more mom's car comment if you can relate look at this i wanted to use my trunk for all the purchases but unfortunately this is what it looks like i can't really use the back seat because it's full of kids stuff as well even here <laughs> oh my god i need to clean the car and this is by the way my friend's car and i know he might watch this vlog milk banana that was from yesterday's walk I don't know if you guys are interested in see what I bought, but heavy cream. Oh, this is the best. This is something we're going to try with my mom. And I got some hummus and rice and I'm going to go home. And on my way back home, I'm going to listen to a book by Wojcicki mother who raised three amazing daughters. Goals. It's such an inspiring book. If you're a mom, then I highly, highly recommend this book. If you're not a mom, then wait till you're a moment and read this book. It's amazing. It's a great book. And I like that everything happens around where we actually live, same neighborhood. And I keep hearing the same uh, 
names of different villages, different names of different streets. I'm like, oh my God, I can totally relate. So highly recommend it. If you don't know Vajitsky sisters, their story is totally amazing. One of them is Susan Vajitsky, CEO of YouTube. Another one, Anne Vajitsky co-founded 23andMe, the company that analyzes your genome and tells you which illnesses you might have. And another daughter is a professor at UCSF. And reading a book by a mom who's able to raise three amazing daughters is something I would pay a lot for. And I'm so glad she actually wrote this book and we all can learn from her. 24 minutes drive home, uh, it's Friday. So I'll go back home, we're gonna have dinner. Dima's gonna come back from work and we're gonna go uh, for a walk to downtown Los Altos Rolly. We'll see. The next rule, muting everything everywhere. My phone is always on silent mode and my husband hates it because whenever he calls me, I don't hear it. But all of my notifications are turned off. Uh, even on my laptop, even on my uh, computer, everything is turned off because if I'm on Telegram answering messages, then I will see everything. If I'm answering emails, I don't want to see those Telegram notifications. I want to focus on my emails. If I'm shooting a video, I don't want anyone to call me. I don't want to reply to texts or have something distract me. Um, so turn off all the notifications and focus. Choose tasks wisely each day. And that means that you have to account for your energy, how you feel. So for example, for me, Monday is one of the worst days of the week because everyone is suddenly back to work and uh, I'm bombarded with messages and emails. Um, so I decided that Monday is a day where I don't plan anything. I don't post on Instagram. Well, at least I don't post the way I do every single day. But I try to take some break from social media. I don't film any videos. And we used to have this big uh, team call every Monday. And a couple of weeks ago, I just told uh, my team that we have to move it to Tuesday because Monday is so overwhelming. And they were actually so happy about it because they felt the same way about Mondays. So Monday is always this weird day for everyone. So probably don't plan a lot of big things on Monday. But for example, Thursday and Friday, this is when I feel that the weekend is almost here. Everyone is a lot more relaxed. And I try to plan more tasks for Thursday and Friday because I just take them easier. I try to do all the meetings on Friday and Thursday um, just because, again, and they feel more like relaxing than business. So Thursday and Friday are the days when I try to work the most. And the last but not the least, just some basic tips. I always make sure that my bedroom looks nice. This is where I work from. I have a studio, which is this room, but my office is in my bedroom. So I need to make sure it looks good. Uh, so I feel productive and I always start my day with making sure that it looks nice. And the second exercise, and I try to exercise every day, either go on a 30 minute hike and we live in the hills, so it's up and down. And I listen to an audiobook, uh, which is another great way to enjoy uh, your exercise routine if you don't really enjoy sports. And I also bought a marathon, like a fitness marathon from my favorite blogger. Because again, I don't like working out, but just realizing that I'm in a company of my favorite blogger makes exercising more enjoyable. So I try to exercise every day. That also helps me distract from my daily routine and think about bigger ideas and think about uh, what I'm actually doing with my life. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I hope it was useful for you. And uh, if it was, please subscribe to Silicon Valley Girl, like this video, and I'll see you very soon in my next videos. Bye bye.